So, I recently went to the Vinchita Bicycle Bag Store, which you can see in one of my videos. I got a couple of bags, including this little, uh, so they call it the boomerang bag, which is fine. I also got this thing. I don't remember what their cute little name is for it. It's a trunk bag. It sits right on your bike rack. And it's pretty clever because the thing about the Brompton is that it needs to be able to fold up and roll along on these wheels. And so when that happens, the bag can't be sitting up here. So the bag has to be very quickly and easily removable and very quickly and easily reattached. In that interest, they've got this design, which is pretty clever. This German company click fix. Uh, so they're, they're buying those, putting them on their bag. I think that makes a lot of sense. Uh, it can grab the stock Brompton rack let go of it very quickly. Problem is, I don't have a stock Brompton rack. I barely have what can be described as a rack in any meaningful sense at all. This is less of like a luggage rack. It's basically just designed to support these wheels at the back so that you can roll it a little more stably. That presents a bit of a problem because these rails are just barely wide enough to clear the the wheel and consequently they're far too narrow for this to grab onto. Why did I buy a bag knowing that it wouldn't actually grab onto my bicycle? Well that's because I think I can build a different attachment mechanism that will make it work. If we look inside the bag here, and I apologize for the lighting, you can see that there's a rigid plastic plate that forms the structural bottom of the bag. It has these little plastic nubbins inside that have screws going through the base and then uh, a padded false bottom here that keeps those from grinding onto anything that you might want or having anything like rattle against that hard plastic. This is really good because it means that there's a an existing hard mount point going through the bag that I can use to model my own bracket on the bottom of this thing. Now this is a really nice, like th this is frankly an amazing piece of engineering and design. So there's no way that I can design something that's this versatile, this strong, uh, this adjustable. But what I can do is better because I'm not trying to design a bracket that is adjustable on multiple axes and can hold on to 70%, 90% of the racks on the market. I just need a bracket that can hold on to my rack. That's really, I think, one of the main benefits of 3D printing as a uh, as a process that you have available is that you can make stuff that isn't one size fits all. And when it's not one size fits all, we don't have to have the strength that allows for these crazy sliding rails and these really strong springs that'll hold with just these two clips onto your rack. We can do something that's a lot more primitive and a lot more tailor-made to this, and so the potential loss of material strength won't matter at all. So uh, this printed last night. This is a prototype of the sort of basic attachment point that I'm going to try to uh, make work for the rack, and it almost fits. It's almost perfect. The only issue that we have with this is that we have um, these four holes uh, on the, the far outside corners. Those are to attach to the screw points inside of the bag. So the location of those isn't really adjustable because it needs to line up with some existing holes inside the bag we're constrained in the back by the fact that we have these wheels back here on this axle extender which helps it to um, make the the whole thing more stable in shopping cart mode 
and the attachment points are getting in the way of the mount points for the bag. Here's the second draft of the uh, rack attachment point and the good news is that it no longer interferes with the uh, the the attachment points back here for this axle extender. The bad news is that we've run into the sort of next issue, which is that it's making contact with the fender underneath. So, once again, um, I don't have to print the full thickness of the previous print because we know where our clearances are and everything like that. So, all we have to look at is the fact that this does in this does indeed uh, clear that fender because we've got a lot less thickness on this central portion. So here's one of the cams, and the idea is that uh, you know the rails lie in those channels, and then when this is pivoted out to the side, you can pull it off, and it. Mm, that's going to have to probably be fixed, but uh, then it um, it locks the rail in place. You can see that forms a nice little circular path. Uh, I think I'm going to have to redesign this cam a little bit. The axis of rotation should be as close as I can get it to the uh, the rail that it's trying to lock onto, so that there's the uh, as small as possible of a torque moment that's kind of flexing it outward like that. We don't want we don't want that happening. We've got our main block, our four cams, and uh, four little washer things to go on the inside. Well, there she is, bolted securely to the underside of the bag. Um, it's looking it's looking great. I think it's going to work good. If we look inside here, uh, um, I've got these little domed standoffs or domed spacers that ensure that it's not going to be jabbing, that those bolts aren't going to be jabbing up into the bottom of anything that's put in the bag. Whoops, not quite. The best laid plans of mice, men, and me uh, often need a second revision. So, uh, this is, I think, the final draft. I've been using this for a couple of weeks now, and it's great. And what's great about it is that instead of having to operate every individual cam, uh, you only have to make one movement on each side, similar to the original design where they had those two levers that would lock in from the sides. So both of these cams on this side are actuated by this lever arm. If you just push right there, locks it in place. Do the same thing on the other side that locks in both rails really effectively. Just like that. So that's the bag project. I think this is going to work really well for quite a long time. Uh, it's printed out of PETG with carbon fiber infill, which makes it really nice and stiff, as well as very temperature and uh, UV resistant, both of which are pretty important for something that's likely to be used outside on a regular basis. Um, I think this is going to be great for getting groceries, for touring, and just for any other general purpose that I might have to put it to. The other nice thing is that because I have the design files and know exactly what parts it needs, I can print out more of these. The bolt pattern is optimized for this particular bag, but you could bolt it to a different bag. I could potentially put a carbon fiber plate with some holes drilled in it on top of this that could serve as kind of a cargo platform on the back of the bike. Uh, even things like a pet carrier, um, 
the possibilities are quite extensive. I don't think that the Vostok rack is particularly common. I think that uh, the company went out of business pretty much right after completing the order orders for their Indiegogo campaign. So I can't imagine that there are too many people out there with the same rack that I have. But if you do have one and you want uh, a mechanism to latch things onto it, uh, drop me a comment and I'll upload the files. Alright everyone, thanks so much for watching, I'll see you next time.